All right, in this episode, we're going to cover from Genesis chapter 28 to the end of Genesis chapter 35. There's a lot of information to cover. Uh, I suggest that you read it to get a better handle on what we're following here. The main body of what I want to cover is the birth of Jacob's 12 sons and one daughter and his marriage to his two wives and two concubines. Now these um, people and the events surrounding their lives are very symbolic of history. They're very prophetic. And we won't analyze it too much in this episode because there's so much to cover. We'll just lay it out the way it all happened and maybe cover it more more details of it in a later episode. Now if we remember from our previous episode about Isaac, it ended with Jacob being sent off to Haran in Upper Mesopotamia to see his mother's family to find a wife from his mother's family because they did not want him to find a wife from the Canaanite or the Hittites or the Ishmaelites, such as Izu did. Izu had wives from the Hittites and the Ishmaelites. And if we remember the blessings uh, that Isaac, of Isaac towards Jacob and Izu, and how Jacob represents the believer because he believed in the birthright. And Izu represents the unbeliever who did not really believe in any power in the birthright. When Jacob journeyed north from Beersheba, he stopped that night in the mountain when Jacob set up the stones for a bed and laid them out properly so that he could lay on them and he fell asleep, he had a dream. And this dream is known as Jacob's Ladder where he was dreaming and there was a ladder going up to heaven from above his head. And he could see the angels ascending and descending on the ladder. And then at the top of the ladder, God appeared to him and he told him, I am the God of Abraham, your father, and Isaac, your father. I will give you and your seed the land where you lay. Your seed shall be as the dust of the earth and spread abroad, north, south, east, and west. In you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. I am with you, and I will keep you in all the places where you go. I will bring you again to this land. I will not leave you till I have done what I have spoken of to you. And this is uh, a bit ambiguous of what God said to Jacob. Um, because it speaks of Jacob going out of the land into Upper Mesopotamia and coming back. But it also speaks of his descendants going out of the land and coming back. So Jacob, when he woke up, he said, Surely God is in this place. And he took the stone that he was using for a pillow and he set it up as a pillar and he poured oil on it and he vowed a vow to Jehovah. He said, If God will be with me and keep me in this way that I go, and if he gives me bread to eat and clothes to wear, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then Jehovah shall be my God. And this stone that I have set up shall be God's house. And of all you shall give me, I will give a tenth to you. So 
because he said that he will set it up as God's house, the, and he named the place Bethel, which means house of God. So Jacob woke up in the morning, he vowed to vow, and then he headed off on his journey into Upper Mesopotamia. Now, beginning in chapter 29, Jacob goes into the land of the people of the east. Well, he actually went north from Beersheba and north up to Haran. But the people of the east are known as the people of the land of Sumer or Shinar. But those people who were Abraham and his family moved up into Haran. So that might be why he called it the land of the people of the east, or it could be because it's the land of the people of Mesopotamia, who are mainly in Shinar. So when he comes into this, into the, near the town of Haran, he finds a well and where people are gathered around the well with their flocks and there is a stone in the well, over the well and the men rolled the stone away from the mouth of the well and they watered their flocks and then they put the stone back and Jacob asked them and said um, do you know Laban? And they said, yes, we know him. And here comes his daughter now with the sheep. His daughter Rachel was, was coming, tending her sheep. And Jacob said, are you, going, are you going to roll the stone away from the well? And they said, no, we won't do that until the rest of the flocks come at the end of the day. And then we, will, we roll the stone away again. But Jacob didn't wait for that. When Rachel came, Jacob met her and found out that it was his actual cousin. It was his mother's niece, because her father Laban is, is Rebekah's brother, Rachel, uh, Jacob's mother's brother. So Jacob met Rachel and he immediately fell in love with her and he rolled the stone away from the well and fed her sheep, or watered her sheep. And then they went and met Laban, her father, and they had the meeting, uh, find out, they found out who Jacob was, they welcomed him into their home, and he stayed with them for a month. And I suppose he filled them in and all the things that have happened since the last time when the servant came to find Rebecca. And then Laban um, says, says, you are my family and I don't want you working for me for free, so what would be your wages that you are working here with us? And Jacob said, I will work for you for seven years for your daughter, Rachel. And Laban agreed. And so Jacob worked for seven years for Laban for the hand of his daughter, Rachel, in marriage. And when it came time to marry her, of course she was veiled and they had the wedding ceremony and Jacob took her into the tent. And in the morning he found out it wasn't Rachel. It was her older sister, Leah, who maybe wasn't quite as beautiful as Rachel and Jacob loved Rachel. And Jacob came out and he asked Laban, he said, why have you done this to me? I worked for seven years for Rachel and here you gave me Leah. And Laban says, it's not our custom to give away the younger daughter before we give away the older daughter. So in other words, 
she's the first one to go and that's the one you get so jacob made a deal again to work for another seven years for rachel and laban agreed so jacob worked for him for another seven years for the hand of rachel in marriage so now he had both daughters as wives and i guess it was the custom that when he when laban gave him leah as a wife he also gave leah a maid and when he gave rachel as a wife he also gave rachel a maid so so now jacob has two wives and two servant maids one with each wife and then we get into a series here of how his children were born and this is an interesting thing in that it was like a competition between the two women because Leah the older daughter was kind of ignored by Jacob and Jacob loved Rachel because she was very beautiful Leah was not very beautiful she was average and so God closed Rachel's womb and opened Leah's womb and Leah began to bear children now the names of the people are pretty important in this episode as we found out in the last episode Jacob's name means usurper as Ezu meant rough and Rachel means Ooh, which is a female sheep and Leah means weary and coincidentally I don't know how important this is but Laban means white so now Leah begins to bear children and the mother of names the children in here and each child's name is given for a certain reason this is this is pretty consistent throughout the bible you will find that the people's names are very um, attached to their purpose in life and and this the coincidence or the circumstances surrounding their birth so leah gives birth to the first son and she names him Reuben and Reuben means see you a son because the Lord has looked upon my affliction and now my husband will love me so she just wanted Jacob to love her she'd been with Jacob for seven years now while he's working for her little sister to marry her little sister so she only wanted Jacob's love and then she bore a second son and she called him Simon which means hearing because the Lord has heard that I was hated and he has given me this son also so she's still being neglected and then she bore a third son and she named him Levi which means attached because my husband will be joined to me because I have borne him three sons and then she gave birth to a fourth son and she named him Judah which means celebrated because now I will praise the Lord um, it seems like she has given up on Jacob and now she is praising the Lord for her four sons now after this Rachel became envious of her sister Leah and she demanded that Jacob give her a child and Jacob says am I in God's place who has withheld children from you 
Now, this has been interesting because if we look at Jacob's birth, him and Izu were twins, if we remember from episode 13, his mother, Rebecca, was barren, and she couldn't have children, and his father, Isaac, prayed for her. And then she became pregnant and had twins. So Jacob has taken a quite a different attitude towards Rachel. He's like, am I God that I should open your womb? So it just seems that that's what's going on here. Um, Jacob seems to be in, enhanced or he seems to be obsessed with Rachel's beauty but not with giving her what she really needs. And he seems to neglect Leah, the older wife. So then Rachel comes up with a great idea. If we remember, if we remember from, from episode 10, uh, The Life of Abraham, that God had always promised Abraham a son and it wasn't happening. And Abraham's wife, Sarah, came up with an idea that if you make a son with my maid, that is actually my son because I own her. And that way you would fulfill God's promises. And they made the son who turned out to be Ishmael who ended up being cast out because he wasn't actually the promised son that God had promised. Uh, and, and circumcision was given to Abraham as a result of this thing, this uh, son that he made, which symbolizes righteousness by works as opposed to righteousness by believing God. So... Now Rachel comes up with this idea. And when when Laban married off his two daughters, each daughter he gave a maid also to each daughter. And Rachel's maid's name was Bilha, which means timid. So Rachel's idea is, okay, I'm going to give you my maid and you make a son with her and that becomes my son. And so Rachel, Bilha bears the child, but Rachel actually names the child. So Bilha bears the first son, and Rachel names him Dan, which means judge. Because God has judged me and heard my voice and has given me a son. Now, if we remember the story of Ishmael, God didn't really give her this son. She kind of made it herself, right? It's the same story as Ishmael. Then Bilhah bore a second son, and Rachel named him Naphtali, which means my wrestling, because with great wrestlings I have wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. So she's winning. It's, it's a contest. She's winning against her sister, she now has two sons, where Leah had four. So she's catching up. Now Leah sees what's going on here. And Leah is saying, she's not going to do this to me. So Leah gave her maid to Jacob. And Leah's maid is named Zilpa, which means fragrant trickle. Now fragrant trickle... The idea of fragrant trickle is uh, certain perfumes are made by slitting the stem of a plant and the, the perfume or the sap drips out, trickles out of the plant and is collected. So that's the idea of the fragrant trickle. And so Zilpa, the maid, Leah's maid, bears the first son and Leah names the son Gad, which means to crowd. As in the idea of overcrowding somebody as an attack. 
and her reason to name him God was because a troop is coming. She's crowding Rachel. And then Zilpah bore a second son, and Leah named him Asher, which means happy, because happy am I, because the daughters will call me blessed, because she's has the most children. She's uh, leaving Rachel in the dust as far as childbearing goes. In those days, uh, a wife was blessed if she gave her husband many children. There, there, uh, Leah is competing for Jacob's love. She's giving him many children. I guess she was up until Judah was born, and then she said, now I will praise the Lord. Now she's only competing with Rachel to stay ahead of her sister. Then, after Asher was born, Reuben, the oldest son of Leah, he found some mandrakes in the field. Mandrakes is a hallucinogenic plant. The fruit of it is called love apples, and the root of it is also used to make a hallucinogenic tea or something. And it's considered like a love potion of some kind. It's a hallucinogenic love potion. It was uh, used by the Wiccan people and by the Druids uh, in Europe. It was popular um, as a love potion. So she found, Reuben found these mandrakes in the field, and Rachel says to Leah, Give me some of your son's mandrakes. And Leah says, Oh, is it not enough that you've taken my husband? Now you want my son's mandrakes too? And Rachel says, No. Jacob, obviously, was sleeping with Rachel every night because he loved her. And so Rachel says, well, for the mandrakes, you can sleep with Jacob. So Rachel sells Jacob to Leah. <laughs> and uh, so Leah... Jacob comes in from the field and Leah says to him, you're sleeping with me tonight because I have paid with my son's mandrakes for you. So Jacob sleeps with her and God opened her womb up again. So Leah, now she bears Jacob another son. This would be number five from her, not including the maid. And she names him Issachar which means he will bring a reward. Now, the, the, the reward, the idea of the reward is that if you work for a day's wages, your reward is the wages. So she named him Issachar and said, God has given me my hire because I have given my maiden to my husband. So she didn't, I guess she didn't find that easy to do, but she was doing it to keep up with, keep ahead of Rachel, uh, competing for Jacob's affections. And uh, so that was her reward for giving her maid. And then she bore another son, number six, and she called him Zebulun, which means habitation. And she said, God has endued me with a good dowry. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she's still not given up hope that Jacob will love her and love her more than Rachel, I suppose. And then she bore a daughter. And she doesn't give a reason, but she called the daughter Dinah, which means justice. So I suppose she felt justice from God that she had borne two more sons, six in total now, 
because uh, she was being treated so badly by her husband. Now, the next thing that happens is that Rachel becomes pregnant. And Rachel names her son Joseph, which means let him add. And she says, God has taken away my reproach, and the Lord shall add to me another son. So her reproach was not being able to bear children. Now she has born a child. God has taken away my reproach. And he will give me another son. So she is putting her faith in God that he will help her um, catch up with Leah. 